Hello everyone, my name is Oskar Hellström and I'm here today to talk about my journey and experience with learning Japanese calligraphy. My journey started off in the year 2014 when I was in the Finnish military doing my mandatory military service. I had been given one week off and during this week I went to Germany with my parents and in the town Leipzig we went to a museum and there I found a book that was handwritten in Chinese. And there was especially one character that caught my eye. It was the character Ten, or Heaven. Uh, and especially the last stroke was really interesting to me. It, it's a stroke that kind of goes down to the right on a 45 degree angle. And then gets gradually thicker and thicker. And then turns to the right. and gets thinner and fades out. This stroke I later learned that it's called uh, Migiharai in Japanese. This is what I consider my first contact with Japanese calligraphy and ever since I've been obsessed with it. I took a picture of the poem and uh, we went back to Finland and I went back to the military and always when I had free time I would take out the picture and just look at the characters and try to understand them using the internet. Uh, I didn't speak any Chinese or Japanese at that point, so it was a bit hard, especially because many of the characters were not in common use today. I would also look at these pictures and try to copy the letters of the Chinese characters in my notebook. And later I learned that this is actually a very common way of practicing Japanese calligraphy in Japan, called Rinsho. I noticed that I really liked doing it, just looking at these Chinese characters and trying to copy them. So, after year 2014, when I finished the military service and went back to my studies of economy, I actually bought my first uh, Japanese brush and ink and some paper. I started brushing these the same characters with real ink and real brushes. During this time I also found a lot of YouTube videos regarding Shodo or Japanese calligraphy. I would look at a lot of YouTube videos and take videos of the screens and try to copy the characters that they wrote. I didn't speak that much Japanese at this time, so it was still quite hard. Around three years went on like this, where I just looked at YouTube videos and searched uh, information online regarding Japanese calligraphy and practiced by myself. One thing that I believe is absolutely key to learn Japanese calligraphy is being able to watch your teacher or other good calligraphers write. Uh, the result is what can be seen on the paper and it's one way to practice by just trying to copy stuff but I believe it's a lot more efficient to try to look at people that are better than you and try to copy their hand movements or body movements instead. This way it's a lot more time efficient only after meeting my teacher and being able to converse with him and practice together with him I was able, able to recognize some flaws in my own calligraphy and improve upon them. It is very important to keep yourself humble and stay open to new ideas and approaches. I met my teacher Zote Sensei in the year 2018 when I first visited Japan. This was a quite short visit, only one day actually, but I was able to speak with him and he was able to give me some valuable advice. In the year 2019, I was able to go to Japan again to meet my teacher. This time I had more time and I was able to practice with him in his house and follow him along to all kinds of different calligraphy classes. The fundamentals of Japanese calligraphy teaches us to always hold the brush at a 90 degree angle from the paper and only use the tip of the brush. This teaches the student and student a delicate control of the brush and it helps to form a good understanding of basic balancing of Chinese characters. This is a very good fundamental technique 
but unfortunately it, it lacks feeling and emotion as an end product. When you get to more advanced teachings, things start to change and you start using more parts of the brush. My teacher Zolte Sensei teaches a more advanced method where he uses the entirety of the brush to give the calligraphy a feeling of being alive. These different techniques changes the way we perceive the calligraphy and give, gives it different characteristics. I believe that Japanese calligraphy is not something distant, but something that can be enjoyed by everyone. I believe that the aim of practicing calligraphy should not be in the final product, but the enjoy the action of brushing every stroke as correctly and as wholeheartedly as you possibly can. To put it shortly, enjoy the moment of creation. Whatever you do in life, I believe it's important to choose something you have a passion for because that makes it easier to continue doing it even when you're not feeling excited about it. Writing correctly is a word I've gotten used to while studying Japanese calligraphy. As much as it is an art form, Japanese calligraphy is also a study of the past. The Chinese characters are the oldest characters still in use today, and the characters have changed and developed over the years. The history on how the different characters fonts and styles came to be is very interesting to me. For example, the earliest seal script styles, how they were developed, and then the, how the hiragana and katakana developed in Japan as the Chinese characters came into Japan. And uh, I believe it is my responsibility as a Shihan certified calligrapher to try to portray these characters objectively accordingly to how they appear throughout history. I believe the rules of Japanese calligraphy are a common understanding of the aesthetics of how characters are written throughout history. By studying these aesthetics thoroughly, we are able to reach a understanding on which we are then able to build upon. Even though Japanese calligraphy is a very old art form and it's basically history, it is still moving forward. The truly great calligraphers are able to capture these ancient aesthetics with modern interpretations. These aesthetics are also present in other Japanese art forms, for example ink painting. The empty space is very important and can make up large portions of the entire final piece. This can be seen in the famous writing by Seshu and another good example of this empty space can be seen in Zen gardens. There are some characters that I'm very familiar with that I have learned to write in many different styles so I'm able to write them quite quickly and confidently. Here I am writing Haru which means spring and uh, this is the stage at which I believe we are able to build upon the understanding of aesthetics this stage where we are familiar with the history and have practiced the character enough times to be able to write it confidently in various styles. At this point, I believe we can play within the rules of Japanese calligraphy and expand upon it. This is something that I think others might enjoy too. Here's a piece I have made of uh, Yama, and it means mountain. Japanese and Chinese are familiar with the normal stroke order for Yama, but in cursive writing things change. Usually you would write Yama beginning with the vertical stroke in the middle, then writing the left part going to the right and finishing with the right vertical stroke. I have followed a stroke order common for Yama in cursive style, where I begin from the left and proceed to write the middle vertical stroke and end to the right. Like this, I am keeping it historically correct while creating an interesting piece of art. And this is Ki or Spirit, written in cursive style. This character appears in historical calligraphy pieces many times, so I have many sources to draw inspiration from. Here I choose which parts to accentuate, where to open up spaces, and how the character's overall flow goes. All while remaining true to the historical sources, and following my teacher's instructions to the best of my ability. Instead of expecting immediate results, I believe we should strive to enjoy the moment 
and enjoy the process of, of, of creating something. When I first started and I, when I watched some great masters, I would, they would always seem quite random the way they wrote. Only after years of study I'm able to see that it is not random at all, it is just the result of years and years of practice. Throughout my experience with Japanese calligraphy, I have time and time again been reminded that there are no shortcuts in life. As the Japanese proverb says, Senri no nichi mo ippo kara, or a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. It is said that it takes about a thousand hours to become proficient at something, and I completely agree with that, but I believe the real challenge comes after that. Uh, to continually put in the time and practice to improve, even after decades of learning, is the real challenge. There are many things to learn from this proverb. The first step is obviously important, yes, to begin the journey, but on the journey you, you can't take the, the fifth step before taking the fourth step. So taking all of these steps slowly and in the right order, I believe to be very important. And finally, a bit about how I think we humans learn things uh, regarding with Japanese calligraphy. Uh, there are unfor unfortunately not that many good sources in English, so being able to speak Japanese was obviously a necessary skill and I learned that quite fast when going and searching for information on the internet. Most of the stuff I found was in Japanese, so I actually started learning Japanese to be able to understand that. I believe critical thinking is um, important regardless of what you're interested in, and Japanese calligraphy is no different. Do not rely on only one source of information, but try to branch out, and whenever you come across information that conflicts with previously accumulated knowledge, uh, carefully evaluate the possibility that the new source might be wrong or the possibility that you have misunderstood something in the past. Practice much and practice with the intent of getting better. Uh, by learning Japanese I was able to learn faster and when I met my teacher learn knowing Japanese was obviously necessary. And this brings us to my two final points that I would like to share with you today and these are understanding and execution and I believe these two to be absolutely key when learning anything that requires uh, physical performance it can be any sport or anything so the understanding first of all you need to understand what it is that you're trying to do you need to understand how to do these bodily movements physical movements and you need to understand, in my case in calligraphy, I need to understand exact, the exact point at which I want some very specific movement to occur. And when looking over the results, I need to understand exactly where I'm doing something wrong and where I need to improve. Then comes the execution part. I need to be able to change and improve what my body is already doing. If I if I've noticed some mistake and I understand the mistake, then I should be able to change the way my body moves to experiment and find better ways of doing it. These two points about understanding and execution I believe to be the most important part of learning any physical activity and improving on it. And on that note I will end this speech. Uh, thank you everyone for listening. I'm very glad to have received this opportunity to be here today and share my, my journey with you. Thank you to all the organizers of this event. Nihonjin no minasama mo, saigo made kite kudasatte, mangotoni arigatou gozaimashita.